China's youth are fed up with communism. They're finding ways to protest despite surveillance and censorship. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. Before we begin, last week I put out an episode about how YouTube was using age restriction to censor China Uncensored and put it into a viewership death spiral. But the support I got from you was overwhelming. So many people sent us supportive messages, or gave super thanks, or signed up for the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army on Patreon. We got so many messages that it was impossible for me to respond to everyone. But I just want you to know how much it means to Matt, Shelley, and to me. Although Big Tech didn't seem so supportive, when I posted that episode on Facebook, they removed it and accused me of prostitution. Okay, technically they accused me of adult sexual solicitation. I mean, I do ask people to contribute, but I hardly would call that prostitution. And the only street corner I ever cover for work is Tiananmen Square. Although people there don't always get the good time they were looking for. Anyway. We're seeing a major threat to the Chinese Communist Party developing. Ever since the Tiananmen Square Massacre, the Chinese Communist Party has pushed a patriotic education campaign to indoctrinate China's youth so they would never rebel again. And for the most part, it's worked. China's Gen Zers are known for towing the government line, both because they grew up in China's most prosperous period, and because the party is very good at using the internet and social media for indoctrination. Wait. So everything you see on social media isn't true? Why, then that might mean I'm not a prostitute, Facebook. However, things aren't looking so prosperous anymore. Youth unemployment is through the roof. Most people can't afford their own apartment. And millions of men can't even find a spouse, which makes for the longest season of all time for The Bachelorette. The competition for jobs that do exist is so tough, it's led to a brutal work culture called 996, where people work 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. six days a week. If you're unhappy about that, there's literally millions of people willing to step in and take your job. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, and it's already leading to dissent. There's the lying flat movement. Young people are basically giving up on the intense struggle of Chinese society and just lying flat. It's kind of like planking, but instead of it being a fun social media challenge, it's submitting in the face of existential dread. That evolved into the let it rot movement, which means to let things that are already beyond repair deteriorate. And now there's run philosophy, which is basically about fleeing China. I covered these movements in detail in a recent episode called Communism Has Failed China's Youth. Okay, Shelley actually covered it. I'll put a link in the description below. But now a new protest movement is taking shape, and it has the Communist Party terrified. I'll tell you more after the break. Welcome back. A new protest movement has emerged among China's youth. And unlike previous movements, this isn't about passively checking out of the system. This is targeting the Chinese Communist Party itself. That's right, the CCP messed up so colossally, they actually inspired Gen Zers to get up and do something. Which is astonishing, since Gen Z is literally all about lying flat. Earlier this month I told you about one man's lone protest in Beijing, where he hung banners on a bridge calling for freedom and democracy, and calling to remove Xi Jinping from office. It seems like the protester was quickly arrested. But his protest has taken on a new life. Throughout China he's become known as Bridge Man, a reference to the famous Tank Man of the Tiananmen Square Massacre. And more importantly, He's inspired others to protest as well. Now you might be wondering, how is that possible? Surveillance is everywhere in China. I mean, Bridge Man was instantly nabbed. Well, there's one place in China where there aren't security cameras. Public toilets. And so people have been spreading his message there. My Chinese isn't perfect, but I believe it says, No to lies, yes to dignity, for a good time, Call Xi Jinping at 6603-7166. Anyway, it's happening all over the place. These are more bathroom graffiti photos from a university in Nanjing. Some are calling it China's new toilet revolution. 
knew because Xi Jinping had actually launched a, I kid you not, toilet revolution to modernize bathrooms across rural areas of China. When you're communist, everything's a revolution. Switching from boxers to briefs? Welcome to the tidy whitey revolution, comrade. These recreations of the protest message are being documented on social media, like the Instagram account Citizen Daily CN, or this one, Northern Square. In fact, Northern Square received more than 2,000 submissions from all over the world of sightings of anti-Xi messages. And Citizen Daily CN said that by Sunday, it had received more than 1,500 submissions of anti-Xi slogan sightings from more than 328 universities around the world. The best part is this has shown young Chinese dissidents that they aren't alone. The worst part is realizing just how many people are using their cell phones in public bathrooms. For decades, the Communist Party has done its best to make people isolated and afraid. But now, people are seeing they're not alone. One of the organizers of Citizens Daily CN told the New York Times that it made me feel, for the first time, hopeful. In this era of oppressive silence, there's anger in silence, hope in despair. A Chinese student studying in London said after seeing the protest banners spread around the world, she cried for hours. I thought to myself that there are many Chinese who also want freedom and democracy. But where are you? Where can I find you? If we meet on the street, how can we recognize each other? And that is still a major barrier for this budding protest movement. How do people connect when the consequences are so severe? It's kind of like dating when you're into some weird kink. You want to find people like you but are afraid what can happen if you bring it up with the wrong person. Only in this case, your kink is freedom. I guess that's a kink Facebook is not into, and why they think I'm a prostitute. One university student in Guangzhou told the New York Times that when he gets on the subway, he uses his iPhone's airdrop to share photos of the protest and instructions for how to download a VPN. And get this, he said, the first step to end the Communist Party rule is to wake up the people. That student has it right. Notice he doesn't say to bring down Xi Jinping, no. He understands it's the Communist Party itself that needs to end. And in that, he's way ahead of so many Western so-called experts on China who think the problem is just Xi Jinping. As in, if only Xi could be removed, things could go back to the good old days of, I don't know, persecuting different people? There were no good old days under the Chinese Communist Party. It's crazy. I can't figure out why people say that. Oh wait, yes I can. It's like, if there's a puppy punching store where you pay to punch a puppy, but it'll get better once they get a new night shift manager. That's really not the issue here. But at least in China, more and more young people are learning about the true nature of the Chinese Communist Party and working to end it. And the message I have for them is, if you're watching, you aren't alone. And China Uncensored would not be possible without support from viewers like you, either by liking and subscribing, sharing the show with friends and family, buying an awesome t-shirt from our merch store at chinauncensored.tv slash merchandise, or through direct support on the crowdfunding website Patreon. Those are the fans I call the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army, who join us in the fight against the Chinese Communist Party. And as a thank you to them, I answer their questions. Today's question comes from Vorbis Ex Visitor. Hi Chris. After 10 years, you are master of YouTube demonization. Read demonetization. So why don't you edit videos with some sensitive news into two separate videos? One shorter for age restrictions and one without sensitive info. Now that is really an excellent question. The problem is YouTube's community guidelines are so vague and arbitrarily enforced, we really have no idea what will get flagged. Like this episode about microchips. Now, if you ask me, there wasn't anything that could be considered sensitive, but it got age restricted. I know that when we've covered protest movements in China, we often get demonetized or age restricted, but it's still not clear which parts of the video YouTube will consider sensitive. Not to mention that would be double the work for Seamus, our hardworking video editor. But the great thing about the support from you and other fans in the China Censored 50 Cent Army is that I don't have to worry about that. Most of our budget comes from viewer support, especially on Patreon. As long as you guys keep supporting us, we'll keep making the show, regardless of what YouTube considers inappropriate. 
which I'm betting are the things that hurt their business interests in China, which basically means this entire show. When they age restrict us, that's a little trickier, because it means less people will even have a chance to see the show. And yes, we are on Odyssey and Rumble, but those platforms don't have the reach of YouTube yet. And the most important thing for us is to reach more people. Which is why I'm asking all of you watching, not just the Patreon supporters, to please share these videos with your friends and family. Get the word out. Because as I talked about in this episode, nothing terrifies the CCP more than when people standing up to the CCP realize that they're not alone. So thank you again for your question and your support. And thank you for watching. I really mean that. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.